Donald Trump commented for the first time since a new expanded gag order was placed on him in the New York criminal trial. The order now includes family members of the judge and the prosecutors. Why? Because Trump had been attacking the daughter of Judge Juan Mershon online. As we said, Trump just released a new angry statement, ranting about the judge, saying there has virtually never been a more conflicted judge than this one. But interestingly, he did not mention the judge's daughter. Seen as Kara Scannell following this development is with us now. Kara, what else did he have to say? Yeah, John, so Trump with this new post today, and as you said, he toes the line here. He's continuing to attack the judge, but he does not go after the judge's daughter after the judge made clear that she was off limits or Trump could face possible sanctions. So in this new post, Trump, you know, as you said, he, he talks about how conflicted the judge is. He said, they can talk about me, but I can't talk about them. That doesn't, that sounds fair, doesn't it? Question marks. This judge should be recused and the case should be thrown out. There has virtually never been a more conflicted judge than this one. Now, th last night, the judge issued this order at the request of the Manhattan prosecutors, saying that Trump could not speak about family members that are related to him or the district attorney, Alvin Bragg. It is an expansion of the gag order that he put in place last week. And this is because, as you said, Trump began the day after this uh, gag order was first put in place, attacking the judge's daughter on social media. She works for a Democratic consulting firm. Trump has been trying to argue that she is is conflicted and therefore the judge should be recused from the case. He moved to recuse the judge once before. He said he's going to file another motion to do that. That first one was denied. I mean, the judge finding here that these threats are real, he said it is no longer just a mere possibility or a reasonable likelihood that there exists a threat to the integrity of the judicial proceedings. The threat is very real. Admonitions are not enough, nor is reliance on self-restraint. And the judge focusing on Trump's lawyer's argument saying that he needs to have the ability to respond and have political speech. The judge says he can respond, but he said there is no legitimate purpose to post photos of his daughter online. His daughter is not related to this case. And he also looks towards some of the arguments that prosecutors made where they said some potential witnesses are now concerned about testifying at this trial because of the possible threats not only facing them, but their family members. The judge saying that that is real and that is something that could interfere with the trial's process. He said his number one job is to make sure that this trial goes. John? The threat is very real. That is something to hear from a sitting judge. Karis Cannell, thanks so much for this update. Appreciate it. Kate? Yeah, joining us now for more on this is CNN senior legal analyst, former assistant U.S. attorney, Ellie Honig. So, Ellie, you see this first response now from Donald Trump on the expanded gag order. Not a violation of the gag order in this response. What do you, what do you see in this? Well, Kate, I think Donald Trump's post just now is exhibit A as to why the gag order is perfectly fair and appropriate. Because in this statement that we just saw from Donald Trump, he goes off. He goes off on the judge. He goes off on the charges against him. He says it's unfair. He says people are biased against him. And you know what? Under the gag order, he's allowed to do all of that. He didn't have to hold anything back. He went on an angry rant, and that's allowed under the gag order. What's not allowed, what is now off base and should be off base, is attacks on jurors on witnesses, on court staff, and now, as of the expanded order, on family members. So there are boundaries here. Donald Trump can say quite a bit, as he just has done, but he can't step over those lines. And I think it's a perfect example of why this gag order is both necessary, but also fair and respectful enough of Donald Trump's First Amendment rights. And, and just fact check this part for it. I cannot talk about the corruption and conflict taking place in this courtroom with respect to, the, <laughs> to a case that everyone and then he goes on. Yeah, incorrect, because he just did it, and he's allowed to do that. I mean, what Donald Trump is allowed to do under the gag order is to say essentially what he just said. He is perfectly within his rights to say, this judge is biased against me. He's perfectly within his rights under the gag order to say, this case is unfair. He can say the DA has bad motives. What he cannot do is say things that endanger the process beyond that. He cannot attack jurors, can't attack witnesses, can't attack the daughter's judge. Uh, so again, I think it's a nice example. The trick before the judge in any gag order is balancing the defendant's First Amendment rights. You do have broad First Amendment rights with the need to run an orderly trial and protect the process. And again, I think this posting, as aggressive as it is, I think is a, is a very good example of why the gag order strikes the right balance. 
realistically, what happens if he goes further, if he comes out at these campaign events today or any time outside of court or on social media and targets the judge's daughter again? I mean, this is such a, an unprecedented everything is when it comes to what yeah. this judge is facing in terms of, you know, a former president and someone who's currently running for president. What realistically could happen if he violates it? Yeah, if he does step over that line again, I, I think he's going to have a real price to pay, maybe literally. So what can the judge do? There's really sort of three levels of discipline here. If we think about progressive discipline, one, a judge can excoriate the defendant, can give him a tongue lashing in court. Now, for ordinary participants, that's enough of a deterrent. You never want to tick off the judge. He's the one who's going to run the trial. He's the one who's going to instruct the jury. If there's a conviction, he's the one who sentences. The second thing a judge can do is start imposing monetary fines. We saw that in the other case, the civil case, but the fines were five and $10,000. That's not really going to make a dent. And then third, and I think only theoretically in this case, a judge can lock a person up for violating a gag order. I would not expect that to happen here. But in ordinary cases, yes, that is that is an option. But the judge is going to have a discipline issue on his hands throughout this trial, the same way a parent has to struggle sometimes. I know you know this, Kate, with disciplining children. You have to set boundaries and you have to enforce them. And then watch them. I mean, I, I can't send them to Rikers. That That is one thing right. I know. I cannot send my children to Rikers. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, <laughs> also, uh, in this case, we know more now about the possible witnesses who be, could be called bold names from the Trump White House days, Hope Hicks and Kellyanne Conway. Specifically, when you look at Hope Hicks, what can her testimony provide? Compare that to other witnesses that we know are likely to be ca called, like Michael Cohen. So there are two things about Hope Hicks that I think make her potentially a very powerful witness. First of all, she's the ultimate insider. And most significantly for this case, she apparently is on some of those key phone calls that are happening between and among Donald Trump, Michael Cohen and others when they are first arranging for these payments to be made to Stormy Daniels in 2016. Keep in mind, the payments themselves are not illegal. It's the falsification of records around those payments. So we don't know whether she has information about either of those things, but it appears she was part of crucial conversations. The other thing about Hope, Hope Hicks is she is still more or less in the Trump camp. She is not a defector who has publicly turned on Donald Trump and earned his ire like a Michael Cohen. She remains in relatively good graces with Donald Trump. And so she's a better witness for prosecutors there because she can't be attacked as some sort of angry anti-Trump ideologue. She's still someone who's fairly close with him. So I think she could be quite a powerful witness.